Hello there, everybody, and welcome to week three of the MGS2 VE League. This is a Discord stream between Apache Smash and Platonic Guy, with Joseph Joestar 316 and Macroft 360 on commentary. Take it away, dudes. Okay, uh, it's good to be back once again for commentary. Joined with uh, Makarov, and uh, we will just shortly get underway between uh, Platonic Guy versus Apache Smash, which is starting right now. Yeah, so uh, both uh, Apache and Platonic are really good runners. I cannot emphasize that enough. They have amazing times, and especially Apache coming up with a victory of two wins, both one of threes, and Platonic Guy with some amazing times, like a one or three and a one or two. So yeah, expect a really good race between the, the two of them. Yeah, I mean, these guys are definitely fierce competitors. Um, I've raced against uh, at least Platonic in a you know one-on-one -on -one race like this. Um, the guy is definitely equipped to really get some amazing times and very rarely makes... Um, you know, any like in-game mistakes that will cost him a lot of time, you know, runs very consistently. Uh, but Apache, he's, he's definitely got the potential to, you know, keep up pace with him. But um, at the beginning, it's just going to be a race to Olga. Um, so not really a whole lot uh, to count anybody out just yet. But Olga can do one, you know, several things. And oh, dude, that oh, roll up the roll. stairs. Oh, no. Yeah. The commentator's curse. Good. <laughs> Something that I want to add is that uh, Platonic Guy is a really swaggy player and he will go for a lot of risky rolls and cartwheels. So just be ready for them. See, they both get a right side Olga, which is the favorable um, outcome here, despite that Olga can go either direction, you know, via left or right spawns. And in this case, getting right side Olga is better. Um, as opposed to going left, getting one shot in, or just having going into a loop, which is not as bad. But man, this is uh, this is off to a tight race so so far. And if I may uh, chime in a bit, so, uh, what Platonic guy just did, it's an IL strat, which you usually see in ILs and the uh, boss survival, uh, where he stands on his toes. It's slightly faster. And the platonic guy just got a dab drop. Yes, I was about to say. Shoutouts to David Wildstar for discovering that little uh, trick. So what you do for it is you unequip your M9 and you mash square. If you are lucky, you will press square on the same frame as you fall. And that skips the animation. It's a really small time save, but uh, especially in tanker IELTS, it can make the difference. Yeah, I think it saves you about like half a second if you get it perfectly um it's what i like about it is that there's really no like bad thing for going for it like you're not missing out on any like big time but if you do get it it, it just looks really cool yeah it there's really no reason to not go for it and coming up is one of the hardest rooms in tanker which is engine room so let's see Platonic guy goes for the risk engine room, the swag strat, whilst the Apache goes for the much safer uh, regular engine room. The biggest difference is that uh, for, swag, for the swag strat, you drop on the second line, and for the regular engine room, you drop on the third line. And you might think that a swag strat, that must save a lot of time, and it doesn't. It saves one second, because if you don't do it, you have to skip a cutscene. That's the only difference. Yeah, I mean, I actually kind of like the, the swag strat over, um, I guess, like the, the standard one. It's just, you know, every little skip you can do, even if it's like a minor cutscene skip, I just feel like, kind of like the dab drop, there's really no, um, there's really no, like, disadvantage for going for it. But, I mean, there are some things that can happen, you know, the roll up the steps to um, knock out the SWAT team responding to the... Um, to the mayday call can you know can go wrong and here's platonic doing the um the double shot uh usp to a m9 shrank uh what that does is it'll allow you to stagger the guard up front without him detecting you uh, which also allows another guard at the end of the hallway to kind of like wake up momentarily and then fall back to sleep which is just enough time to um sneak by them it's a strat that i've actually adopted 
uh, into European so Extreme. We have a uh, pause from uh, Apache. That's uh, interesting. Uh oh, did something happen? Uh, maybe he's got like connection oh, um, issues. I think that uh, he noticed something about a white line on his stream, and maybe he wants to fix that. And from Platoni guy, a decent guard rush, USB guard rush, like uh, we do on uh, very easy. Uh, uh, let's see, I don't know what they're doing, but I guess we'll see Platonic do the ladder skip glitch. Uh, and yeah. the way he does it just scares me. Yeah. But he makes it look really safer. consistent. It's actually more consistent and safer. It's called the Azul Ladder Glitch. So what you do is instead of going in front of the stairs, you go to the side, you punch, punch, kick, and uh, equip the camera as soon as you get on the ladder. And instead of doing a precise series of inputs, you just hold right and mash X. That's it. Oh it's god, that kick. last roll looks so dangerous, but yeah, keep going. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as I said, Platonic guy goes for risky stuff and dangerous stuff. So expect a lot of that from him. And uh, as you can see here, he goes for the regular standard free spot photos. Yeah, there's actually a two spot photo uh, setup that you can also do, which is uh, either way, what you're doing is you're capturing uh, four angles and a Marine logos uh, capture for uh, Metal Gear Ray. And there's a spot in the room you could stand or rather two spots in the room if you want to capture the logo. The uh, widescreen hitbox for the logo can be taken from two different angles, which clearly don't show the logo. But as far as the game's concerned, I mean, Makarov, I think Atakan says, yeah, I mean, it kind of looks like the logo. I mean, uh, yeah. it doesn't say it, but I mean, <laughs> he thinks you got it. But and basically, the interesting you're... thing about that is that it only works if you play in 16 by 9 It doesn't work in 4 by 3 Shoutouts to 16x9 resolution format, <laughs> but I mean, that's just what makes it possible. So I think it looks like Apache's going to go for the same setup, which is a, a three spots. You're taking um, one on the left, one in the middle, and then the last two on the right side of the whole three. Um, one to capture front right, as well as the logo. And you're aiming at a specific part of the, I guess, like arm um, towards like a round socket in the middle. There's like a round shape that you kind of focus the camera on. And just like that, it's like, hey, you got the logo, but I'll tell you what, I didn't see the logo. Okay, so I guess they're just clearing up the pause, which uh, looks like we're just going to keep going as is. But even with the uh, slight head start, I mean, really anything can happen in this run. Yeah, but uh, the thing is that Apache paused and pausing the game also pauses the IGT, so he actually didn't lose any time. Yeah, that's a good thing, because uh, on other editions of MGS2, like uh, either, you know, PS2 Sons of Liberty Substance or um, HD Collection. Uh, or actually, no, wait, I take that back. Uh, pausing the game will pause the IGT, but it's just, uh, uh, I I'm thinking of something else. But uh, So now you're going to see Platonic, as he started the elevator call-down sequence, he runs back to pick up the M9. Yeah, he... Some people do that, it's a meme at this point. VMN show that you actually have enough time to go back and pick up all of the M9 boxes. And if you do the regular fights in this game, you really don't need that extra ammo, it's just a meme. However, I think that Platonic will go for non-lethal Fat Man, and it, those extra bullets are extremely useful for that. Yeah, it was, uh, I guess there's a little story that goes behind, like, well, how did the M9 pick up surface? Well, uh, it was uh, in an MGSR prior uh, VE tournament that was held, and we were doing an exhibition race uh, between myself, Apache, D-Limes, and uh, B-Man. And B-Man just suddenly goes back to the M9 uh, while we're waiting for the elevator, and we're like, dude, this guy's out of his mind. Why is he running back to the M9? But as it turns out, like, Makarov is saying, you actually do have enough time to pick up the M9, wait for the elevator to come down, which is timed exactly right when you come back. Man, that guard is blind. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> now you notice the platonic can equip the M9. Why did he do that? Well, it's called the menu uh, glitch or the menu trick. What uh, it is, it's you basically finish tanker on the USB, 
so that you have the M9 on previous. You have to have the M9 on and unequip it right before the pre-skin cutscene. If you do that, you will have the M9 on previous after the Stillman cutscene. That saves exactly one menu. And you might think a menu is not a lot, but in this one, every time save is really big. Yeah, I mean, with a category as optimized as uh, very easy, every menu you can either avoid or just make simpler uh, does make a tremendous difference um, in this run because now, now that it's gotten into the 102x range, like every bit of optimization, even if it's only saving a tenth of a second, you know, I mean, it may not seem like a lot to most people, but when you're up there with uh, high performance times like that, every little bit helps. So now the moment of truth. Where Platonic guy actually go for conveyor belt? Let's see. I don't he know doesn't. if he will, but okay. So he's just he gonna. Didn't. Yeah, I think he's just gonna keep it simple uh, for now. But uh, yeah, see now you can tell like as he exited the Stillman cutscene, which is only permissible on New Game Plus or New Game Plus Plus. It's just you're just skipping two and a half minutes of. You know. uh, no, it's like 69 minutes. It's really, oh, really right. What, yeah, what am I saying? There, I thought it was 420 minutes. I, I was going to say that too. It, it was like 69 minutes, 0. 0.420. I don't know. I mean, who's counting? But it, it, it just skips a lot of like, here's how you defuse the bomb. Here's how you use the sensor. We're just like, yeah, still when we get it. And we just move about our merry way. And uh, another thing that you saw Platonic do is that he crouched for the bomb. Why did he do that? Well, it's called a fast bomb. There are two types of diffuses, a slow diffuse and a fast diffuse. There are certain specific setups for some bombs, which will guarantee that you get a fast bomb. Uh, to guarantee a fast bomb, you have to spray all four corners of the bomb. And I just noticed something is that uh, Apache's name is No Life. <coughs> Oh man, the memes. Um, but yeah, so like there's the like the standard slower diffuse and the faster diffuse. And again, with every bomb, you can try to get a fast diffuse, which, you know, if you think about it, every second and what is it like a second and a quarter, um, you're you're saving. I mean, especially 1. for 1.5 per uh, fast diffuse, I think. Yeah, so like a second and a half for every fast bomb you get, especially on... Okay, so our fact checker says uh, a second and a quarter, so I, so I was right. Uh, so like, especially for Fat Man, um, every fast diffuse you get uh, is really great to, you know, like that. that's like a few seconds you would not get over a standard diffuse, and it just kind of goes back to the, you know, just being efficient, you know, with a category uh, such as this. So now I'm thinking, if I know Platonic, he might go for the... I think he might go for, like, the two mine pickup here. Um, one on the way uh, into Strutty and one on the way back from Strutty. Let's see. Nope, he's... Oh. Oh, so he's going to go for the damage cancel. Yeah, that's... Uh, he went for a slow version of the damage cancel, but uh, it's still a really difficult uh, thing to do. It's really risky, especially in ways to do. I don't know. I mean, that, that bridge terrifies the hell out of me, even <laughs> no matter what strat you go for. But, like, when you trip a mine and it's not how you intended it to to have it happen, it's, you know, you're losing probably, like, three to four seconds just from having to recover from the explosion and if the ciphers are um, shooting you, which will give you, like, a mini stun uh, for every hit you take and... You know, that's just time loss you don't want to have. And very nice FA bridge from Platonic. And then let's see what Apache will do uh, as he makes his way across the EF bridge. Now, I think he will probably go for uh, something similar to what Platonic did. I don't know if he's going to go for a damage cancel. Nope, he's going to go around play he safe, which is what I... Yeah, it's what I tend to do. I just, I just hate that bridge, personally. And Platonic yeah. is now doing the worst room in the whole game, Strat A. So the bomb in Strat A, it's really slow to defuse it the intended way. So what we do is we cheese it and we use a specific setup to defuse the bomb from the other side. It's really difficult, 
to get well and first try and I hate that room completely. Yeah, exactly. It's just uh Whoop. Okay, never mind. I think my stream is just a little bit behind. I almost thought like Apache uh, was a little too close to that spot guard. Uh, but now Platonic is making his way over to Strut B. And, you know, we'll be coming up on the final stages of the bomb defusal, which we're also going to see something that, uh, which again was found during a, a VE tournament, uh, which is, you know, defusing the final bomb, then picking up Sensor B which has like a whole nother, um, you know, mechanic behind it over other runs, which would normally get sensor B, then defuse the last bomb. But it was found, I believe it was King of the Bees, that if you pick up sensor B second, as you make your way into Strutzy, as Platonic will be doing shortly, what it does is it skips a, I guess, like forced wait. Because uh, normally if you pick up the sensor, defuse this bomb in the bathroom, and then leave Strut C to trigger the final uh, countdown codec with Stillman, saying, Raiden, you got 400 seconds to get down there and defuse the last bomb. Well, by picking up the sensor B second, you're basically saving, I think it's like one three quarters second, of a second, exactly. or one second. Yeah, and then... Exactly one second. So like right now, the timer's going to start from here, rather than outside of Strut C, which is preceded by a forced wait. Um, so in this case, you know, you have the sensor, you have the final countdown, and he's just going to make his way back down to the docks of Strut A. All right, so 0.8 seconds, approximately one second. All right, so I was almost close again, so I'm, I'm getting there. <laughs> so I think at this point, it's just going to be... A uh, interesting chaff pickup. Uh, from what was it? Platonic screen. I think it was Apache. Or was Apache? Apache, yeah, Apache. I was gonna say like what I was uh, you know, at this point it's gonna be like if they're gonna go for either a chaff pickup strat, uh, if they go chaffless. There's uh different ways to handle uh certain parts of the run coming up later, which will be using the chaff, which is gonna be. Uh, towards the other hand, uh, other end of the run, when you make your way in the shell two, um, the more aggressive approach is actually going chaffless, meaning you don't pick up the chaff either on the BC connecting bridge, on the rooftop of Strut A, which I again just out of preference avoid. I just do not like those mines up there. Um, it's very risky to pick it up, but it is kind of on your way out from the docks back to Strut E when you finish the fortune fight. Um, which is going to be another important fight coming up, which is, again, to some people, it might be viewed as an auto-scroller, but there's actually things you could do to optimize the fight and, you know, uh, not lose a whole lot of time. It's mostly an auto-scroller. The ending of it is pretty much RNG. It's an auto-scroller, but the beginning, you influence it a lot and you do a very specific setup that you cannot fail. So, uh, what... Uh platonic guy is going to do is he's going to turn right and punch three times it's very important that you do not turn while you are doing the punches or while you're standing up you have to stay crouched and while you're crouched you can do whatever you want except don't look in first person because i think looking in first person loses time with the gun actually i didn't know that uh, with looking in first person, I just kind of do it for memes. It might be only on PS2, I think. I'm not sure exactly, but I know for sure that at least on one version of the game, it is slower. Yeah, I mean, like on PS2, since it's running at 50 hertz, and this fight would normally just be very laggy on the screen with, you know, barrels blowing up, the railgun um, shooting past you. Um, but I think on PC, it's fairly stable even on hd collection which is at a like 60 frames per second it's also very stable i mean maybe like little bits of lag here and there but like the whole idea is to put yourself in the room which is going to set up fortune to destroy the forklift um at the front which you might be wondering well what's the deal with the forklift why is it important well it's actually part of a script where 
The forklift needs to be destroyed along with two of the golden barrels on each side of the room, as well as the cardboard boxes up front. Uh, and all we're doing is, is we're kind of shortening up the scripted work that Fortune needs to do in order to end the fight, which is normally uh, Fortune shooting both of the barrels and then shooting at the ceiling at the end. So all we're doing is just kind of preparing um, things ahead of time to try to minimize, uh, you know, variant downtime uh, in the fight. So Patchy's getting a little bit of bad luck with the barrels here. Okay, now she's actually hitting it. And so we're the, just trying to get her to hit it, is what they're doing. And I would like to say that uh, Platoni guy has the M9 equipped, so he will go for M9 Fatman, my favorite fight. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. my favorite fight on Very Easy, for sure. Not of the game, that's uh, European Extreme Solidus. I mean, with as much ammo as he has now, I would not I would be very shocked if he didn't go for... Uh, M9 Fat Man. Wow, that was a really nice mind pickup he did, by the way. I mean, again, I just... I don't know what it is about that bridge, but every time I go by, even though it doesn't matter how many times I've went through it, I just... I'm on edge. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I just... I just don't take any chances on that bridge, because, you know, the minute you trip a mine, like, the amount of time save you would have gotten just vanishes. And that was a really nice cartwheel up those steps. It was found recently where if you cartwheel at the right spot at the right time, you can actually go up those steps without having to fall over. And Platonic is going to go for the fast defuse oh, there. Oh, wait, what? He unequipped the M9. He's going for lethal fat man. So he's actually he's going for a strat that he was just testing right now before the race. So it will be interesting to actually see if he gets it and uh, he got it. It's still slower than M9 Fatman, but it's faster than regular Lethal Fatman. Wow, that is very interesting. I did not expect him to do that, and I think he got, what was it, two fast defuses? I know one of them uh, was slower. Or no, it was two slow bombs. I think the last yeah. one, I think he was... Uh, uh, that last bomb is a little bit tricky. Sometimes you get the fast defuse when you're crouched. Other times it's better to be standing up because, uh, like Makarov said, you're trying to spray, uh, what was it, like you said, like the four corners of the bomb? Uh, yes, the four corners. Let's see. Now, Apache's also going to go for fast defuse, which he got. And, and... another lethal fat man. Wow, so no no M9 Fat Man. That, that's actually very surprising because I know Platonic is capable of it. He goes for it. Um, I'm not sure if Apache goes for it personally, but I think they could definitely be... Uh, like, if they set up and practice for it, they can pull it off. Um, but, I mean, there, there's ups and downs to either strat. I mean, the SOCOM is probably the more common method. It's safer to do. I mean, it's easier to control. Uh, M9 Fat Man is definitely faster, uh, but it's a lot harder to do just given the setup and just got to be able to spam your shots quickly and, and accurately. I just uh, like it because it looks cool. It, it, I mean, it does look cool. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to go for the style points, you know, <laughs> as I would say. I mean, if you can't, if you can't be fast, sometimes you just got to be stylish. But uh, so now they're both making their way into Shell 1, which unique to Shell 1 um, the AK is actually placed in the, I think, what's it called? Like the storage room, the locker room. Yeah, um, this is unique to the very easy you, difficulty. What are you doing? And I think that we might see B2 Claymore strats from Platonic. See, I think we will. All right, so now he's equipping it. I was almost kind of questioning it because uh, sometimes you can menu it uh, on your way to the elevator with the AK uh, Claymore. Um, so what this does is it makes all the guards um, in the room kind of be put on alert. It makes a SWAT team go up the stairs, and it just allows you to pick up the M or not the M9, but the D mic. While at the same time, the elevator um, that he just exited from will stay open, so that you don't have to call for it a second time. And yeah, I think it saves much, like uh, I think it saves like what a second or two over a standard yeah. method. Yeah. It's a fast elevator, pretty much. It's basically a fast elevator. It saves the same amount of time. 
Ooh, this is a interesting uh like punch buffer uh, setup for platonic. Yeah, I recently found that out like two days ago, and I'm I'm definitely using it. It's really easy to do. It might look complicated, but it isn't, and it's faster than the old setup where you uh, knock on a different part of the wall. All right, so now he's going into the B1 core. Where he's going to locate aims, which since we're on a new game plus file type. Uh, since you're able to skip the stomach cutscenes in Strut C, the twist is that Ames, which is normally in the southwest corner per the story on a new game run, New Game Plus will randomize Ames's location in the B1 core itself, which Platonic got a southwest spawn, which is not entirely bad. I mean, ideally you want a northeast spawn, but I don't know, for whatever reason for me, I always get a northwest spawn that just seems to be a thing. I hate it, it's the worst spawn to get. Um, so it's not unless like you post buffer. Yeah, that, that that is true though. I mean, you know, D Limes definitely you know gets really creative with uh, how he locates aims in the court using the the pause buffer, which technically pauses IGT and allows you to kind of get like a peek at where aims will be. But I just view it as rolling of the dice since you know you're not really guaranteed where aims will be when you go in there. Um, no, let's we see where only go for the cartwheel over the stairs. Let's see. I think Platonic will go for it. And he does. Right. Let's see where Ames will be for Apache. Oh, dude, I was just that's, thinking it It was going to be southeast. I'm not even kidding. Good. That's decent. It's pretty good. That'll definitely save him a few seconds over Platonic's Ames spawn. Um, but still, anything can happen because right now, uh, Platonic is making his way to the Shell 1-2 connecting bridge to go up against the Harrier, which is a very, very influential fight. Uh, for both of these mind turners. Something. Platonic uses Star Boy and he will attempt to go for 6 plus 1. Oh, you know what? I think you're right. Because, I mean, there's there's been different methods on handling the Harrier recently, which there's a 5 plus 1 hit, there's a 2 plus 6, uh, which is something you'll see like D Limes go for, but. Plywood, <laughs> 2 <plus> 69. <laughs> Plywood oh, recently man. discovered 2.5. Man, a t another one, 2.5, dude. I mean, I'm, I'm learning something new every day with this thing. <laughs> but, you know, let's see. Apache also goes for the cartwheel up the steps, so very nicely done from both of these guys. It's it's just something, I think it's uh, placement. Uh, like, depending on where you cartwheel, you can actually go up those steps. If you cartwheel either too early or too late... You'll either land partially on the stairs, but not all the way up, or like me, you'll just face plant on your back, um, trying to go up the steps. So Ooh, Platonic uh, tried to go for the swag strat. Yes. He barely <laughs> got it. God, that made me nervous. He didn't blow up the bridge. <laughs> yes. That's the most important part. Yeah, because blowing up the bridge would be a huge uh, setback for him, which... I mean, he wouldn't lose the lead, but, like, it would be a very generous uh, time gain for uh, Apache to, like, catch up. So it's going to be four, five, high he damage, which is good. So I think he's going to go five plus one. Wow, he's unequipping? Wow, dude, that is so ballsy. Yeah, that saves the menu, and it's slightly faster. And now he's going to go for the die shots, which what he's doing is he's canceling the... Uh, oh, die shot cutscene at a very specific point, like as you see the missile pods drop down, and he gets it so very nicely done. Uh, five plus one, two die shots, Harry, which is pretty much a textbook example of uh, let's that. see the leap of faith. I think he's gonna make it, and he, he does. I mean, that leap of faith does scare me, but you know, I think as long as you time it right and you don't want to be on an angle, as I've learned the hard way. When you cartwheel, it just it shortens your distance when you land on the other side. But I uh, played that really risky. <laughs> yes. Let's see. I think Apache. I think he he's will... gonna go for a two plus six. If yeah. I know him. He will go for a meme harrier. I think he's gonna do it. So he's gonna go one, two. Oh no! He's going for five plus one. Oh no! That's gonna miss. So that's. Oh no. Four. Oh, that is gonna I don't cost think some, that's some time. Yeah, for and that was a lot of damage. Oh that's, man, that's a really bad fight. 
Yeah, that's going to cost him a lot of time. Even with these two die shots to follow it up, he's going to be short on damage to end this fight quickly. So that, let's see, I think he's going to be like two hits away from ending this. Uh, yeah, he turns on the uh, flyover shot. And okay, now I'm so curious that... if uh, Platonic will do the macro of special and fall down the gap. <laughs> he didn't. I wasn't gonna say it, but I mean, it's... You know, I never try to take any cartwheel bridge gap for granted, no matter where it is, but... Man, I, oh, oh, no! Oh, no. Magic, no! oh, dude, he fell in! Oh, no! Oh, man, y you hate to see it. Oh, no. Oh, bad. Makarov, I mean, I I felt that one from here, and I'm sure, like, you feel the same way um, yeah, during our race last week. That's nasty, but oh, he got a good continue. I got a bad continue. Yeah, because, uh, you know, during our race last week, uh, I think you were on your way to Shell 2, and it was the last bridge jump you had to make, yeah, and you had to start one. all the way over from, I think it was, like, the ledge, and drop down. Oh, yeah, it was because I didn't know that actually going against the rail makes that jump much harder. I thought it was the only way to do it. I mean, I always figured if you're hugging the rail where the ledge is, it's supposed to be safer. But if you're on an angle when you make the cartwheel, that actually will have a higher chance of failing. Um, I tend to cartwheel like straight in the middle of the bridge, just kind of like cut, cut in between, um, hugging towards the, I guess, lower end of the bridge, uh, which is on like the left side of the screen, I feel like is risky. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, either way, it's, it, it's a bridge you never want to, you know, kind of take lightly. I mean, any bridge jump. So I think it's just going to go right in the middle. So very nice. And oh, I can man. say that uh, Platonic didn't kill the president. Yeah, I mean, well, fortunately for VE, it takes two hits to accidentally kill the president, which... Apache uh, Skill did that. I, I was going to say, I mean, there, there was a special somebody that, that did that, but, you know, I, I wasn't going to try to kick somebody while they're down. <laughs> oh, man, I'm I'm still holding on that on that bridge, bridge fall. I mean, you, you just hate to see it happen. Yeah, it was a close race, just like mine, and just died on, almost at the same spot. Yeah, I mean, cause like, I mean, during our race last week, I mean, it was, it was, it was fairly tight. I mean, I, I know there was like a, you know, it was like I had a almost like a similar area to Apaches where my fifth shot missed, and Platonic got the perfect fight, which is what I think you got. And yeah, you know, it, it's. These these setbacks happen all the time in this category, but, you know, you never know what's going to happen. But, I mean, the amount of time that Apache's lost between the Harrier and falling in the water, it's going to take a lot uh, for Platonic to, like, throw this. But for, you know, there might be a chance because Platonic might know that he's ahead and he might go for Swim Glitch. I mean, if I were him, I would just swim normally, but also knowing him, he's probably going to do it anyway, just because I think he knows down the road he's going to have to do it as a standard, knowing who he's going to be up against, and he's going to play it safe. That's that's probably the right thing to do. I mean, I think he knows he's ahead. There's no reason to risk it, uh, because one setback that could happen here, which, funny enough, this happened to Platonic and I when we raced each other, was well, Platonic was the head of me. He tried to go for swim glitch and failed. And then opted to swim normally, which is really uh, inefficient, uh, you know, for pace. But, you know, sometimes you just got to make that judgment call. Then I try to go forward and also failed, which made it even worse. So neither one of us got it. I lost, but I was like, you know what? No regrets. But uh, but anyways, with the swim glitch, it's uh, it's a way to swim your way over to Vamp's room without having to go through uh, opening... Uh, uh, two wild or uh, water tight sealed doors, and a cutscene. We get a BMN special. Perfect vamp fight. Very nicely done. It's 
Uh, why did you go for the swim glitch or not? You have to maintain really good control with the stinger because if you spam it too fast, Vamp will actually go underneath. And, you know, I believe, uh, I forgot what race did that happen with? It was, uh, oh, it was with BMN. Man. Yeah, and B Man. That's it. Uh, but, like, uh, you know, it was like, I, at least I know with Mac, uh, when I raced him, it was like he, it was like he was like one hit away. Uh, before he shot too fast and he went underneath, but he was able to recover it with a uh, like faster cutscene end to make up for some time. But it was like, man, just like falling in the water, you hate to see it happen. So let's see. I think Apache's got to have to go for the swim glitch, but I would not be shocked if he opted to swim normally anyway, yeah. if he's kind of rattled from falling in the water. And he's swimming normally, so that that's what I expected. And uh, now we have the best part of the game, am I escort? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, there, there's, there's, there's lots of things that happen. I mean, you're trying to escort her around, swim through the water, towing the colonel. Hey, we managed to avoid drowning for the memes. I mean, what's there not to talk about, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, there is a little bit of movement tech when it comes with uh, to moving with Emma because uh, the angle that you approach her matters depending on how fast you pick up her arm. Yeah, and there's actually a little trick you could do at the end, too, with uh, when you leave Shell 2 with her, which is referred to as the Emma Bump, which you gently push her through the door first before you leave um, yourself. And nicely done, Vamp, on Apache's end. Right, yeah, so just, no, no uh, B-Man specials today. Just remember to not do Emma Bump on HD Collection. Hey, man, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> but the, the 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 advisement of not going for an hd collection is that if you're uh if emma falls on a certain line when you push her through there's a highly likely chance she'll fall through the floor into the ocean and soft lock the game because you can't advance the game without her or her key rather to open up a door um which funny enough happened to me on a marathon run that i did and i still have no regrets but I don't know. On PC, it's not, from what I understand, it's not that it's impossible, but it's just less likely that she'll, you know, fall through the floor and soft lock the game, so it's considered, you know, safer. It's like a 1% chance of falling. But on HD Collection, I think it's like 50-50, <laughs> at least to me. But I'm still gonna do it. I don't care. It's for a time save. Even if it's only by like a second. <laughs> oh, but anyway, so we're just gonna, you know, sit back and relax. And as we, uh, you know, watch Emma get escorted out of Shell 2. Pretty sure Platonic's gonna go for the Emma bump. And then we make our way to the, the highlight of the run, which would be the sniping section. So I know that this is not good, but I really want to see an Emma bump. Emma pretty much falling through the floor on PC. I've <laughs> never seen that. But I want to see it at the same time. I don't want it to happen, but I want to see it. Let's see. All right, good Emma bump. I almost thought he wasn't going to go for it for a second, but, you know, just knowing Platonic, I, I think he generally goes for it, kind of like what I do. I mean, I rarely ever not do it because I just figured, hey, it's free time save, but... The thing of it is, if you take too long to do the Emma bump, then the amount of time that you're saving by having her teleport forward while you run at normal speed, it, it kind of loses its benefit after you, let's say, attempt it like a few times. So we're just going to take out the fire by just, you know, blowing off half of the flame since it's just enough to sneak through. And the uh, fun fact about that is that on the Japanese version of the PS2 version, the ringtone that plays there is actually the theme of the game, but for some reason they removed that, and the BMN plays add it to the PC version. Man, we always we always miss out on the good stuff, don't we? <laughs> Man, that'd actually be really cool if... Uh... Like, even if you could somehow put, like, a custom track on the on the phone, like, when it's ringing there... <laughs> yes, exactly, Snow. 
Um, but all right, so Platonic is going to be first up for sniping, which uh, there's going to be some, you know, preemptive work to be done with taking out Cypher, some guards, uh, followed by a codec call from Snake saying, hey, I'm here, but we don't really need his help. And so Platonic's just going to kind of clear the way for Emma. Uh, the nice thing about very easy in this section of the game is that there are no Claymore mines to destroy. You do not need any of the take another crack at trying to pronounce it but the potassamines the uh drug that you can use in game to steady your aim while sniping but for very easy your aim is steady no matter what so you don't need to use um any of those potassamines anyway uh personally i prefer to say diazepam it's basically the same thing but uh, from another version of the game oh from mgs1 and it's even more confusing when you play Twin Snakes because they call it the same thing, but like it, I don't get it. It's like it does the same effect, but they call them like two different like drugs or something. I'm just like, I don't know. It just studies my aim. I mean, what else do you want? But, uh, but one thing of note to uh, keep in mind with this sniping is that you want to be very diligent about where you're standing on the platform and especially where you're aiming with the sniper because for whatever reason, if you aim the scope on Emma, um, at least during the first bridge segment, there's a chance that she'll fall over and lose balance, which uh, for whatever reason, it can't happen. But if you stand where uh, Platonic is, like roughly by the ladder and just keep the scope away from Emma whenever possible, uh, she won't fall over and you'll lose about... I'm trying to think. It's about like six to eight seconds if she falls. Um, it's Seven time loss you don't want. Yeah, it's 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 time loss that you definitely don't want here, especially considering, you know, after you get her on the platform off the first bridge, we're just kind of chilling, and Platonic is just kind of he's just having a fun time. I wonder if he's gonna draw a smiley face. <laughs> yeah, is. that's that's not so smiley. That's more scary. Oh man, I love it. It's, uh, I mean, I tend to do that. I mean, I also tend to do some other goofy stuff that's probably unadvisable, but I mean, I just draw the smiley face for fun. Just be like, hey guys, I'm here. I'm happy. How you doing? Yeah, Tino shows right on cycles. <laughs> yeah, dude, the, that, that actually creeped me out when he was like spamming the first person camera and you saw his eyeballs. I was like, ah. Yeah, so we're just kind of chilling for a while until Emma makes roughly halfway over to the second bridge where there's going to be another set of guards to take out. Um, but, I mean, again, the nice thing about this is, like, you don't have to worry about menuing the the potassamines. You don't have to worry about cleaning up mines, you know, because the, the interesting thing is, like, I think guard behavior, guard, the guard spawn count is... Uh, de derived from the difficulty of the game, the amount of mines on the bridge are also influenced the same way. Um, you know, but I mean, for this part of the run, like if you're racing, I mean, it's kind of like a nice, like, relaxed moment. It's like you're just kind of chilling, shooting stuff, drawing smiley faces, and then, you know, then you kind of start, you know, getting back into the swing of things when you make your way back to Arsenal gear. Another smiley face from Platonic. Yeah, he's definitely happy. Yeah, Apache is not playing it uh, as, uh, let's say, uh, calmly as uh, Platonic. Well, I mean, I try to tell people, like, when things happen in a race, I mean, it, it is very, very difficult to kind of, like, regain composure. Um, especially when you know that it was bad. And... You know, when you're racing somebody that you know is either ahead or if you feel like they're a, you know, intimidating racer, you know, where it feels like, you know, they're less likely to mess up. I mean, it, it, it can get to you. And so sometimes that will influence like things that you do in the race by taking less risky strats or just, you know, sometimes it just implodes where you have like a series of mistakes happen. I mean, it, it there really is like no like secret answer on like how to recover from that other than just really sticking to your game plan that's really all you can do because at the end of the day i mean shit happens in a race and sometimes you just have to finish strong with what you got <laughs> nobody's uh, shooting the seagulls today it seems yeah 
right, look at Platonic spam away at that PSG one. I don't know how some of these guys do it. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, Platonic actually uses Turbo and he will go for Turbo Vamp too, which is truly... It is something that uh, is mesmerizing, as I could say. It's really something different. It's incredibly fast, so it's literally, if you blink, you miss it. Yeah, I mean, there's like a no zoom strat you can do. Um, you can zoom in partially. I tend to zoom all the way in and... Wow, that thing sounds like a machine gun dude when he's spraying like that, but he's just gonna opt for a last headshot. Um, the funny thing about Vamp is that his hitbox is wide open there, so you can hit him as many times as you got bullets. Like, there's no cooldown, but... It's better to hit him in his lower area or on the legs, since every time he gets hit, he kind of moves left and right a little bit when he's moving Emma, um, who he's holding up hostage. Um, so oftentimes, he'll just aim for a spot that's, you know, stationary. Something um, that I can say is getting a headshot is a meme at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. And then coming up for Platonic is going to be the EF Connecting Bridge, which is, again, not another area to take lightly, especially since the ciphers are now up and about, and you want to make sure to destroy at least two of them, uh, making your way into Shell 1 once again, because uh, taking an alert is really the last thing you want, because if the ciphers are up when the alert happens, you will get shot trying to make your way across the EF Connecting Bridge, which is... One thing you want to avoid because the panels that are loose as you get shot by the ciphers will make you fall through. Um, I've definitely had it happen to myself uh, just in solo runs. And, you know, it's, again, even though you kind of come out of an area that's relatively lax with sniping, it's like, it's hard to kind of get back into like go mode where it's like, okay, I got to focus again. Hey, I remember that guy. I don't know, something about, like, you know, letting you go out in style. Oh, yeah, it's Solidus. Uh, yeah, that's the former president of the United States, and he's a sword master. I mean, you know, what What can't the guy do? I mean, it's like, you know, he could, you know, zip around, he can make his muscles bigger, can use two swords. I mean, sort of like Raiden, I mean, which we'll see later. He kind of gets to use a sword for the first time, and all of a sudden he can deflect bullets. <laughs> yeah, and one thing that I can say is that he's really good at making things interesting. <laughs> so, while we wait for Platonic to get out of the torture cell, um, he's just going to call Rose right away. Um, normally, you could just wait, and the call will happen anyway, but we just... You know, call her first, you know, so you don't have to wait there forever. Patchy now making his way across the EF Connecting Bridge. Very nicely done. Cypher's blown up. And he's going to make his way into Arsenal, which now Platonic is going to have a first go at it with Arsenal Gear Gigenum. It's which I think, room. you know, I think he's going to go for the alert strat. Okay, he's not. He didn't. Uh, yeah, there's actually a new strat with that room, which is taking an alert at the very beginning. Uh, which I recently found out about, but I think he's just going to go for the uh, cartwheel or punch buffer into cartwheel to knock out that guard before the alert kicks in and then rolling over the bridge very carefully, which he does. And he's through two gems, so nicely done because falling through that bridge, like other places in the game, is really costly, uh, especially, you know, on how it happens, but... Platonic makes it through just fine, and he's just waiting for the codec from Rose while we answer some rather bizarre codecs from the Colonel. Yeah, I want to say this because sadly we won't hear it, but uh, I really need Caesar 61. Yeah, it, it's really amazing when a uh, famous purple star for one of the tuning fork, something like that. Yeah, I forgot to bring my scissors today, though. I kind of came unprepared. Yeah, on Harry Carey Rock. <laughs> oh man I, I don't know what it is but like some of the codex that the colonel goes on about you know especially when he's affected by the gw virus is just hilarious um and then one interesting thing about this hallway now that we got this uh blade is you have to swing the weapon at least once to trigger a 
uh, timer, which is more of a, hey, here's a sword, and you get to practice with it for a while. But you need to swing it at least once, be on the upper half of the hallway um, in order to actually phase out. Um, I've actually made the mistake once of going past Snake, just kind of memeing and then realizing, hey, why am I not out of here yet? And as it turned out, yeah, I needed to be above Snake. And uh, um, I want to say one thing. Don't do what BMN does. You just swipe the sword and stand there Don't and don't do anything. That's really <laughs> annoying. Do something, swipe, move a bit. Just don't stand still. Let's see. Apache is going to opt to play it safe in Jigena, which... Uh, is definitely understandable. This is definitely a room that you do not want to have any kind of like a crisis uh, to deal with. Which, rather than going for the uh, Tengu knockout, whether if it's via a single cartwheel or a punch buffer, you just opt to go around the guard instead. While Platonic now making his way through Tengu 1, just cartwheel across the room as fast as you can using the AK to take out any Tengus in your way, especially by this door, which you'll do a very carefully timed punch punch kick while releasing first-person camera on the kick, which allows you to clip through the door and just skip the rest of Tengu 1. So let's see what uh, Tengu he does. And uh, he's going for regular Tengu. There is another setup for it, which is called the best week setup, in which you pretty much shoot uh, a Tengu with the soul comb and uh, you stand in another spot. It doesn't make the fight faster, but it makes it a lot easier to actually shoot the tangos. I mean, like by movement tech, this is easier to deal with what Platonic's doing, but I actually prefer uh, the Bestwick setup just because of what you mentioned, where it influences the tango's movement on the bridge. I feel like the, the trajectory of the missile has a higher chance of hitting the tangos before they jump over the bridge. Uh, because Oh no, the mail has been fissioned. Oh wait. Did I get that wrong? I don't know. GW I think is going got it crazy. Right. Yeah, no, something I, is going crazy. A virus is somewhere. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Something slipped in. The game said, you know, we failed, but we're still kind of playing. I don't know. It's sort of a meme. Yeah, and here we find out that this was all a simulation. Yes, it was actually a simulation of the Shadow Moses incident. And it's called the S3 plan. And Solidus is actually wrong about it. He doesn't know it, only the Patriots know it. Oh yeah, I forgot to say this. The Patriots exist, they are a shadowy organization that controls the world. And uh, yeah, uh, GW is their creation and they want to censor pretty much every possible information that can exist on this planet. And uh, we want to destroy them, but we cannot. So our task is just to kill Solidus, which is our father. Not quite, but he kind of is. Man, that just blew my mind. <laughs> it was a lot to take in. Um, so now Apache is going to be uh, going for Tingu 2 while Platonic is just kind of uh, spinning in place, waiting for the speech to be done. And this is the Bestwick setup where he's on the upper half section of the uh, arena, I guess, where he's on an angle towards the upper... Uh, catwalk spawn of where half the Tengus are spawning in while Snake is handling the other half of the room. So as you can see, the Tengus are more likely to move away from the middle of the bridge, which gives you a higher chance of landing a hit on them before they jump over. Um, it's not an auto-scroller as you would believe. There's actually a uh, kill amount that you need to do in order to complete this uh, encounter. Um, the kill amount varies by difficulty. I think on very easy, it's what is it, 48? Or is it less? I forget. Um, but the amount goes up by know. difficulty. Like on European Extreme, it's like 128 something. It's ridiculous. Like if you don't do the Tengu 2 skip on yeah, you know, higher God difficulties, it takes like five to six minutes to actually beat the damn thing. It's. Uh oh, Platonic. What are you doing? Oh, just yeah. kidding. The good thing is that uh, health doesn't matter on very easy. Health is just like taking up screen space. I don't know, I kind of like my life bar, but I mean, the nice thing is uh, the torture choke on uh, post raise is uh, it's only 10 seconds long. The amount of time goes up by difficulty. It goes up to 50 seconds on PC for European Extreme, and you're, you're mashing quite a bit. And uh, just to mention, plot twist, 
we will have to fight our semi-father, which is actually the former president of the United States, with swords on top of the federal hall. Just keep blowing my mind with this stuff. I don't know if I can handle this. <laughs> so, while Apache's waiting for the speech to be done to deal with his race segment, we're going to see Platonic go up against Solidus using the uh, blade. So what he's going to do is knock him over three times at the start while being somewhat far away to bait out missiles, allowing you to cartwheel up to him and then knock him over two more times. Okay, so he did not get the fast zip. Um, so what you're meant to do there is before transitioning into phase two is you want to get distance away from Solidus so that if you're on the other half of the uh, rooftop, he'll ship or he'll, he'll zip uh, to the uh, other end of the roof that Solidus uh, would be on rather than across. Oh, the elbow. And uh, just to ch chime in a bit, this is where it gets interesting. Let's go. See, I think it's gonna go for the stab. Okay, so he's gonna go for the parry. Oh, man, you hate to see those stabs miss, but and that that's is a GG for Platonic. Yep. So round of applause for Platonic. Now we get to watch Apache uh, go through the torture sequence. Oh no, man! I'm 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 praying for him. At that to at that choking looks really scary. Oh, he made it. That's it. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting things you could do with the Solidus fight. Uh, regarding phase two, you can either go for a standard block. You could try to maneuver around the elbow, which is referred to as the people's elbow. Um, and then you could also go for what's called a parry or impale strat, which you either swing the sword as Solidus is about to charge you, um, which you can parry his attack and make him um, lose balance to get attacks in. You can also go for a stab, which, depending on how you do it, will do some damage and also stagger Solidus at the same time. Um, but let's see what a patch you will do uh, now coming up to his Solidus fight. All right, so he's going to do a light tap just to kind of make him stagger. Hit him three times. Bait out the missiles. Another three swings. Moving away. And then getting another set of three hits in. I think he's going to get the short zip here, which he does. Because, yeah. again, he was on the right side of the rooftop. So to get that short zip, you want to be as far away as possible from Solidus. Yeah, it's like it doesn't matter if you're on like one side of the rooftop or the other, but you just got to be like the right amount of distance away so that he has no choice but to zip away. Wow, that was a really good zip RNG that he got because, uh, you know, what Solidus does at the beginning of phase two when he zips around is just RNG. Um, sometimes he'll zip once to a quick attack like he just did for Apache. Other times he'll just be zipping several times before he decides to attack and, and GG um, for, that's uh, GG for Apache. So... Again, round of applause for both of these guys. I believe we'll be going to IGT for both. And if uh, either guys want to chime in for some uh, post-run commentary, I guess we'll wait for that. Uh, looks like Platonic may join us. And Apache, I think, is uh, respectfully hey. bowing out. Hey, there he is. What's up, Platonic? GG's, dude. Thanks. GG. Yeah. How do you guys? Do you guys enjoy it? Uh, yeah, definitely yeah. a good yeah. match. Yeah, I I was definitely feeling the pain when Apache fell in the water. I mean, it I was... heard about that. That's a yeah. yeah. It's... I mean, I know there was the pause briefly uh, in the the holds, which was I think just from a miscommunication. But the race was still fairly competitive, and I know this Harrier. Um, wasn't as ideal, but falling in the water really kind of, it was like, man. But no, it was, it was a good race, and, you know, and like I was saying at the beginning, I know there was like very little mistakes that happened on your end, Platonic, but, um, I don't know if you were really on PV pace or anything, just out of I doubt curiosity. It. I doubt it. it. I would yeah. be shocked. This might be a 102, but I doubt it's PV. I skipped swim glitch. I went for a lethal fat one as well. Yeah, that that shocked us because yeah, like you had all the M9 right. ammo going in, you know. <laughs> know we were thinking you were gonna go for it. I just kept messing it up today, so I thought maybe it's, today's not a good day for non-lethal fat bomb. 
you know, sometimes it's just... Wrong. Yeah, I mean, because, like, you know, it, it's like if it doesn't feel right, you just don't do it. I mean, I did it last week with uh, hold two where my holdups weren't, you know, that consistent, so I go for the domino. But, yeah, yeah I understand. But, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a pleasure to watch it and be able to commentate and... You know, there was definitely some uh, some nail biting moments, and you know, but yeah, it's. Uh, I need to go practice coolant rise again. I messed it up several times during bomb disposal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it happens. You know, I mean, I I remember, uh, you know, leading up to a race, it was like, man, I can't get the coolant rise on Strutty for some reason on the rooftop. Like, I just kept messing it up. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's amazing, like how sometimes even the basic stuff kind of gets away from you sometimes. Uh, wait, is Apache's feed paused? Or is it just me? Uh, yeah, it is paused. I think he's just in another... He might be reading Discord, so it might have paused the game for him. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if that was going to mess up his IGT or anything. No, his, his game is still running in the background. Or Should maybe he's holding the uh, Prince. <laughs> 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 Did oh you guys see God. me when I put the Stinger during Graze? I, like, aimed it down. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh man, don't don't tell me he's gonna be spamming it, try to save those seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it works on for me though. I tried it a while back. It didn't doesn't work for me. The only person I know who it works for is Snow. And I think JMC as well. I don't know. I mean I, I saw that stuff that one day and I was like, man, forget it. If this is what it comes <laughs> down to to save time for, you know, fuck it. <laughs> I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be like, all right, guys, I got this. <laughs> I'm just spamming the stinker. <laughs> oh. oh, man. But no, it was uh, no, it, it was definitely fun getting to watch you guys. And I know, you know, either of these uh, pitfalls can happen to anybody. And, you know, you hate to see it happen. But that's just, that, that's kind of part of what makes it fun. It's just, you know, seeing like two really good runners kind of go at it. And then just seeing like what little things they do differently. And, you know, shit happens, you know, where, you know, sometimes a Harrier fight doesn't go your way or sometimes, you know, Fat Man can sometimes go around to the left. Ames can spawn northwest, you know, those sort of things. But, yeah, GG's to both of you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, JMC. Oh, they just left. But, uh. But yeah, I guess, uh, but just, you know, thanks to everybody for tuning in on the Discord uh, stream today, as well as for D-Limes for uh, hosting it while doing some uh, work any percent IRL with uh, no skip strats. Glitchless. <laughs> <laughs> and we have an Apache stream. Oh, there it is. Um, but I, I guess so. Uh, well, splicing. <laughs> oh man, uh, the splicing. But uh, oh yeah, I forgot. Oh yeah, I was gonna say this, but like uh, you know, for those that are watching, uh, we have the VE League on Thursdays on the Metal Gear Speedrunners Twitch channel. There will be at least two to three races, depending on scheduling, shown on there every week, uh, with a bye week, I believe, at some point. Um, so you could definitely check out some more matches there. There'll be other matches on Discord or sometimes, uh, you know, the runner's own stream, um, depending on, you know, how the scheduling works out. Uh, but you could definitely look forward to more races here on the Discord or on the Twitch channel uh, for Metal Gear Speedrunners. And, uh... No, it was, uh... Apache. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was Apache stream that was paused, not yours. I yeah, think it was like maybe he tapped uh, out or something. We are approaching okay. IGT for Platonic. Yeah, I know. Oh god, you know remember what happened was uh like like it was uh, I think it was plywood that it happened to where his credits was bugged. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like uh like part of the background was still there and when it faded to you know, what should have been, like, a black screen. You can still see, like, part of the credits in the background. He thought, like, the game credit. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know what happened, but, like, I was just, like, on the edge of my seat. Like, wait, are we going to see, like, a game freeze in a race? 
Oh, man. It's like you never know what's going to happen to these damn things, I swear. It's a good thing we're not on 1.6 anymore. Then it would yep. have to be our tier races. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah, let's don't see what time Platonin gets. Yeah, don't forget to mash. I gonna, forgot to do that once. I'm going to guess yes. 103.13. A uh, one or two? No. A very high one or two? No, I don't think so. A PB. One oh three forty two. Ooh, I'm close. One oh three oh six. All right, not bad. That means I mean, G will be a one oh four forty five. I would say a mid one oh four. Let's see. Uh, probably. But yeah, that actually wasn't a bad dime platonic, especially considering uh, you have to get out of the swim glitch, too. Yeah, as soon as I heard, I heard it was 4 plus 1 for Bouchy, I was like, nope, no swim glitch. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, because uh, sometimes it's like, you know, for some the people, they just like... The difference, line you, I got 5 plus 1. The difference between 5 plus 4 plus 1, basically a swim glitch. Yeah. But I didn't need that. I mean, it was it was close going into Harrier. It was kind of hard to gauge with the inadvertent pause, but it was definitely yeah. close. Well, because like what I was gonna say is like for some people they let the opponent's Harrier fight determine it. They let maybe just shell two and just kind of like what their gut feeling is, or they just go in knowing I'm doing the swim glitch no matter what. Mentality. Yeah, I'm really feeling a mid one of four for Apache. Yeah, like I said, one of four forty-five. I think it is. The one of three four twenty. Yeah. I'm going to go with the thirties, a one of four thirty something. The gap will be as large as you think, just because of that inadvertent pause. Could be. It could be like a. I don't know. Maybe a one of four twenty. Who knows. It will not be a 103. There's no way. Come on, 104, 42. Come on, 101. <laughs> oh, dude, that would blow us soul away. Wow. Wow. 120. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh man, nice. dude, he should, he should just get like a half a point just oh, for getting that God. kind of a split finish, I swear. That's so funny. <laughs> but, uh, oh man. But yeah, well, GG's for both runners, and, uh, you know, well done. All right, well, that's, that's going to wrap it up for this race here. Hope you all enjoyed it, and we will catch you for the next one.